Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your mighty presence here tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you because we know you are here already. You have told us that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be in the midst of them. And we know that you are here tonight in your power. The power that breaks every yoke. The power that heals every sickness. The power that delivers from every oppression. The, the power that is able to accomplish impossibilities in our lives. We're he, we know you are here tonight. We welcome that power here tonight in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, we know that you are here. Because where Jesus is honored, you are there. Where Christ is glorified, you are there. Where the word is read and believed, you are there. Where there is great faith and expectation, we know you are there. Holy Spirit divine, we welcome you. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we give you the liberty to walk as it pleases you. On my right, on my left, in my front, all around here, we pray that you'll continue to move in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that all through the time of the message and the time of the ministration, we pray that you will move without any hindrance in Jesus' name. That you will deliver the oppressed. That you will heal the sick. That you will raise up those who are paralyzed. That those who are blind, you will open their eyes. That those who have any curse upon their lives, you will remove the curse in Jesus' name. Lord, that if there is anyone being tormented by any evil personality, that right now as we get into your word, that you break every yoke in their lives in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, tonight you will open the windows of heaven. You will shower your blessings now upon your people. And your people will never be the same again in Jesus' name. We know you are here already. You are at work already. Manifest your miracle working power. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, here we read the word of the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. We're living in the days of the anointing. Joel had said, it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams upon my servants, upon my handmaids in those days when I pour out of my spirit. And the Spirit of God came down upon the church. And then John tells us that the anointing abides in you. And if the anointing is there, then you don't need anyone to teach you that God is going to heal. God is going to deliver because you know by the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. There are just two points I'm going to give to you in the message. And after the two points... We're going to minister to the needs of everyone here. You will not go empty-handed. Because you are blessed already. Sitting, you are blessed. Standing, you are blessed. Hearing, you are blessed. Speaking out, you are blessed. While you are praying, you are blessed. Anywhere you go, the blessing of the Lord is upon you already. And the devil will not be able to stand before you. 
you cannot escape the miracle power of the Lord today. There are two points I'm going to discuss with you. Number one, the, dis the description of the yoke. When we say the yoke is broken, what is that yoke? What does the Bible call a yoke that really has to be broken? So point number one, the description of the yoke. Number two, the destruction of the yoke. We describe it, then we destroy it. By what means are the yokes to be destroyed? What are the elements you already have in your hand, in your Christian life, that can destroy the yoke? And what instruments or what are the things we have as a body together here tonight? That can make us to destroy every kind, every form, every shape of yoke in any life. Number one, the description of the yoke. I'll be reading the scriptures to you. And the scriptures will describe the yoke for you. In Nahum chapter 1. Nahum, that's very, the very end or near to the end of the Old Testament. Nahum chapter 1, reading verses 12 and 13. Thus says the Lord, Though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be caught down, when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will affl afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bones in sunder. The yoke referred to there, if you connect those two verses, are the yoke of affliction. The yoke of affliction. It says, you have been afflicted. There are many things that come into the lives of an individual that may bring affliction. And then you try to shake it up. You try to remove it one way or the other. But a thing will not be shaken up. And you feel oppressed. You feel afflicted. You really are going through suffering. And then it's something that is imposed upon you. You don't know how to get rid of such a thing. That's the yoke that the Lord wants to destroy tonight. So, number one kind of yoke is the yoke of affliction. Now, number two, the yoke of bondage. In Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 13 and 14. Jeremiah 28. From verse 13, go and tell an in air, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but I shall make for them yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron. Upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. You see, that yoke there is the yoke of bondage. This kind of bondage is uh, slavery. And uh, the Lord had said, as a result of the sin of the children of Israel and of the many nations around, he was selling the Israelites and other nations into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. And he will be under bondage to Nebuchadnezzar. And that bondage God described as a yoke. Which means then, if somebody is under a kind of bondage, is bound, is limited, is um, not able to do what he ought to do. There is no freedom because of the oppressor, because of the tyrant, 
because of his slave master that he sold in him in bondage. That is a yoke. It's not going to be always Nebuchadnezzar. It may be the devil himself. It may be demons. It may be powers of darkness that is holding that individual down. Tying that individual down. And the medical science says they cannot see what is actually wrong with this individual. But the bondage is there. But then I believe that tonight that yoke will be broken as well. And as the yoke is broken, the bondage will be totally taken away. And you will be free in the name of the Lord. Now in Leviticus chapter 26, we'll go to the next one, which is the yoke of oppression. The yoke of oppression. In Leviticus 26 and verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bonds of your yoke and made you to go upright. You will see there the Lord was referring to the experience of the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. They were under the oppression of Pharaoh. And that furnace of affliction, that oppression that they went through for so many years, the Lord here described as a yoke. There are times that people have complained that they have oppression of demonic forces. Either it's pressing them down in the night, or it's afflicting them, or it's making something, a personality or whatever it is to walk about in their body. But whatever form it takes, it is coming from the evil one. And it is the yoke of oppression. Tonight is the night to get rid of that thing. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, here we have the yoke of disease and destruction. The yoke of disease and destruction. There are so many verses uh, explaining this. I cannot read all the verses, let me just select them. I read verse 48 first. Therefore, that's 28, 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And it shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. The yoke of disease and destruction. Well, you see, I see destruction there. I can't see any disease there. I told you there are a lot of verses. You have to read everything to get the whole picture. Look at verse 59. The Lord shall make thy plagues wonderful. And thy plague, the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, terrible sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, I will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee, and also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Then you see the agents of the destruction. That is spoken about in verse 48. Is the disease that is the yoke that is causing the destruction. And we cannot tell the number the of sicknesses and diseases upon many people today. And they act as a yoke. Destroying people. But thank God you are here tonight. I said thank God you are here tonight. 
at the mention of the name of Jesus, all those diseases will flee away from you. In Lamentation chapter 1. Lamentation chapter 1. Reading from verse 14. Lamentation 1, 14. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his son. Here we are talking about the yoke of iniquity. The yoke of sin. There are people that have some peculiar problems, some peculiar sin, some peculiar iniquity. They want to be free and they cannot be free. They fast, they pray, they do quite a lot of things. They hate their sins. They hate themselves for the sins they are committing. And they want to be free from everything. And they cannot be free on their own. And they listen to messages. They listen to every other thing. But it becomes so difficult, impossible for them to be free. If you really want to be free, freedom, liberty is waiting for you even now. You will be free. In Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 1. Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 1. Stand fast therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again. Or the yoke of bondage. That's the yoke of false religion. The yoke of false religion. You know there are people that have this kind of yoke upon themselves. And to be able to come right into the light, into the truth, is literally impossible for them. But the Lord will help you. The Lord will deliver you. And all those things that have been in your life, they will be taken away in the name of the Lord. I've given you the description of the yoke. I've spoken about, number one, the yoke of affliction. Number two, the yoke of bondage. Number three, the yoke of oppression. Number four, the yoke of disease and destruction. Number five, the yoke of iniquity and sin. Number six, the yoke of false religion. Time will fail me to tell you how I have seen the Lord delivering people from every kind of yoke. And I know that the Lord is still here tonight. His power will never fail. He has not changed. He will never change. As our God changed, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forevermore. And when you talk of uh, all these yokes, I want to tell you that there are living evidences today that all these yokes are being destroyed. And they are being destroyed in very simple ways and as uh, we continue tonight, you will see that there is nothing difficult for the Lord at all. In the recent months, up till uh, this uh, very month in which we are now, I've seen the Lord walking in wonderful, wonderful ways. I just told you that we came back uh, from South uh, Africa. We were there from the 4th until the 11th. Uh, the meeting actually finished on the 9th. And uh, it was so wonderful to find those people coming out one by one. And uh, maybe some of you already know the way God leads me to minister. I announced to them that immediately I finished my prayer, you know. I gave them the message. And then I said, now it's time to pray. And then I mentioned what I wanted to pray for the rest of their hands. And then I prayed. I said before I continue to pray, the healing is there already. If you have got it, come out here. And they were just lining up and coming out and coming out. And then I said, then let's go on. Then we went on. I prayed. I said, if the thing is there, you've got it already. If you have got it, come out. They started coming out. You know, we were just praying and immediately, instantaneously, the thing was being done. And I believe it's like that tonight. You know, there one woman came out, six, 85 years of age. And the problem she had, a terrible yoke, a terrible affliction, she had had that problem for more than 50 years. 
and immediately at the mention of the name of Jesus, everything was taken away instantaneously. And just about this time last year, I was in uh, one of the states in the southern part of Nigeria. There was uh, this man that had the yoke of uh, madness upon him. And the relatives did not know how to handle him. So what they did was to chain his hand and chain his legs and then they put a padlock. And uh, then they, they brought the man like that, chained together like that to the crusade. And then I gave the word and then after that I said we're going to pray. You know, when I mention the name of Jesus, no devil can stay. And when I mention the name of Jesus, no disease can stay. And I know it, he knows it, if you know it, we're united together. Because, you know, that is the covenant that the church has with the Lord. And that is the covenant we have with the Lord tonight. When we mention the name of Jesus, no evil power can remain. And you know, we just, I just mentioned the name of Jesus and that man was wonderfully delivered. And they brought him forward. Now the Lord had delivered him. We were looking for the fellow that put the padlock there. We said, come and open your padlock. He opened the padlock. We removed all the chains. And the young man came out and he spoke wonderful English. Because he was an educated man. But after his education, they turned him mad. And then they were carrying him about with all the chains. But the Lord removed all the chains. And tonight, the Lord is going to remove your chains. Whether they are visible or invisible, the Lord is going to take everything away in Jesus' name. Just uh, some months ago, we were at uh, a church in town here in Lagos. And I was uh, praying for people. This uh, woman had been uh, having mental problems. And it was a great bondage and a great yoke in that family. They had carried the woman to a lot of places. Uh, they are carried to, I don't want to mention the names of the churches and the names of the prayer houses so that you don't think we are putting down any kind of congregation. And eventually, because the problem continued, then they brought the woman to uh, the prayer time that I cancelled on Tuesdays at uh, Bagada. And then they were all there, and they all came, they were holding this uh, woman because it was a serious mental problem. But I don't see anything very serious because uh, Calvary is more serious than that. The cross of Jesus is more serious than that. And when Jesus said, it is finished, there's nothing serious coming from the devil anymore. We don't take the devil very seriously. Do you take him seriously? No, not at all. So they all came, but you know, they, didn't, they were taking the devil so seriously. And he carried that uh, woman in. Uh, these other two people. And then I said, now just get ready. Your miracle is there. You are going to get it now. Immediately I pray you are going to be totally delivered. And I prayed and within two minutes I had finished. And then I said, thank, uh, thank God everything is okay. You are well already. And he looked at me as if doesn't he know the seriousness of the problem? And then they carried her out. And one of the women that brought uh, the woman uh, said, Is that all? Or are they still going to pray more? So the other woman replied, uh, the other fellow, and said, This one is deeper life. That's how they pray here. But it works. And uh, so they went away. And then they rushed back later to come and give glory to God. Because, you know, they got back home. The uh, woman that was having the mental problem before, she washed herself, she went to sleep, and then she ate, and there was no problem anymore. There is no problem. Yeah. Only solution was the Lord. Another time I was coming from uh, the office in Bagara, it wasn't even a meeting day, or even in prayer time, I'd entered into the vehicle. And then there, was, there were four men holding this young man. And the man was terrible to look at. His uh, eyeballs were like, uh, you know, bringing out fire. Everything was red because he had run all those four other men almost ragged. Because he was mightier than all the four men. I had entered into the vehicle and we had prayed so that I could get out of the office areas and go home. And then they, they came dragging the man. And as they came dragging the man, they said, uh, Please, sir, 
uh, we have a problem here. And I saw them as they were laboring. And so I sat down, I relaxed more because I knew it was the devil. There's nothing to be agitated about. You don't see. If you, if you take the devil seriously, you will think that he has power. So I sat down at the back of the vehicle and I wound down the glass and I said, what's the matter? They said, it's this man, it's this man. Oh, I said, there's no problem. I said, hold him and then close your eyes. I said, in the name of Jesus, you devil, you know that once I get involved with something, you have no right to be there. I said, God, in Jesus' name. And then I said, open your eyes. Remember, we were just by the side of the road. The vehicle was just about to move away. I was sitting down there at the back of the vehicle. And then I said, when they opened their eyes, I said, what's your name? I was talking to the man that, you know, had been, uh, for four days, he had not slept. For four days, he had not left them alone to even give them any breathing space. I immediately after the one minute prayer, I said, what's your name? He told me. I said, do you know this man? He said, that's my brother. I said, do you know that one? He said, that's her friend. I said, do you know this one? He said, that's her uncle. I said, do you know this one? He said, yes, I know him. I said, go back home. Don't make any trouble. You're all right. He said, yes, sir. And then he went home. And uh, they came back to see me later. They said, yeah, after they got home, he just took his bath. I apologize to all those people because of all the things that are done. Everything was completely all right. There, there is no problem. If you know the name of Jesus, you are going to be delivered in Jesus' name. And, uh, you know, it was in Britain that I was invited to a place, not deep alive, where a minister's uh, conference there, not deep alive, but a Pentecostal church. And after one of the sessions, the Lord really did some wonderful things because I was taking them on a series of signs and wonders. And I had to talk for five days continuously just talking about signs and wonders alone. And I had to give them testimonies to back up the teaching. And uh, one of the nights, there were some of the ministers there, they really had some problems. By the word of knowledge, everything came out. Some of them came out eventually to see me almost literally crying. And then one man came out, a minister. And then he told me, he said, can I marry another woman? Because my wife had uh, gone away. I said, no, you cannot marry another person. It's one man, one wife. He said, but I have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, every drop of blood in his body had been poisoned. And then he got to the hospital. And the doctors confirmed and wrote a medical thing to him and gave him and told him that there is no cell in his body that is not affected by the poison. So he was a dying man. When the wife saw that, then the wife ran away and said, I don't want to die. I can't stay with this dying man. And so he told me that woman will never come back. How can I remain like this? So I said, I'll pray for you. When I pray for you, a miracle will take place immediately. Then you will go to the doctor and tell him to give you another medical report. And then after he gives you that, you make a photocopy and send to that woman. Then I said, the woman will come back immediately. He looked at me as if these Nigerians, they believe the Bible too much. They believe that really with God, all things are possible. Before he had a chance to argue, I said, close your eyes. Before he closed his eyes, I began to pray. And then I finished the prayer. I said, Amen. I shook his hand. I said, I'll meet you next time with your wife. He looked at me as if he was dreaming. But I believe what I said. Because it's the word of the Lord. When God says, thus says the Lord, the devil cannot dance around. And so we left it like that the following year, that denomination, because of the wonderful things that happened in the previous year, they invited me again. And I was there. And in one of the sessions after finishing the preaching, the man came to me. I didn't recognize him to start with. He just came and he said, do you know me? I said, no, I meet many people. I said, who are you? He said, I'm the man that said, every part of my body, every drop of blood was poisoned. Oh yes, I said, I remember. Then he said, praise the Lord, here is my wife. And uh, so I said, 
Tell me the story. How did it happen? Oh, he said, I did exactly what you said. After your prayer, I went to the doctor. I told them to test me again, and they couldn't find any poison within my body. And then I made a photocopy of that new medical report. I didn't even send transport money or write any long letter. I sent it to my wife. Immediately, he, she got the letter. She packed all her load and came back immediately. And we have been happily living together ever since. You know, that's the mighty power of God. And it doesn't matter the yoke of sickness or the yoke of oppression in your life. The Lord will break it in Jesus' name. You know, when we talk about the yoke of religion, uh, some time ago I went to uh, what is now called the Delta State. It used to be bended at that time. And as I got there, we were on an evangelistic trip. And we got to this particular place. I saw this woman. She had a pot upside down. And they put some oil on it. And then she was running around. And uh, the people were went together. They said, let us uh, pray for his child. Because the child was completely lame. I said, don't be in a hurry. Let her finish worshipping her idol. And so we sat down there. And uh, she worshipped. And after that, then I called her. And I said, uh, see you. You are worshipping that kind of thing. See what the thing you are worshipping has done to your child. So I said, if you are going to break that uh, pot, because there is nothing, there is superstition. I am going to pray for this child, and the child will rise up and walk. So she said, do that. And if that child, is, if he rises up and walks, I will abandon the idol. I said, no, you do yours first, and then I will do mine later. Then she argued, and then, no, you do the praying first, then I will obey later. And after some argument and some uh, counseling, she agreed. And she took that uh, idol, that thing, and threw everything to the bush. And after she has done that, within two minutes, I just said, in the name of Jesus, child, rise up. And the child rose up and started walking. And, uh, you know, then we let the woman to know the Lord and to be really born again. And the boy also, because he was of age, we gave him the word and it was a wonderful thing. And the father was still waiting in the farm. And I said, when is the father coming back? He looked at the time and said, he'll soon come back. I said, we'll wait. And so we waited. And, you know, teaching her the word of God, assurance of salvation, how to overcome temptation and all that. And joining a good church. And then eventually the father came. And you know, at that time, many years ago now, I had not learned about how to preach and how to have good, nice communication. That time, I, you know, really would lay it on people like, uh, you know, like I know it. And so when the man came, I said, welcome. I said, you have been an adult worshiper before. And the devil has, uh, you know, look at what the devil did to your child before. But now the child is okay. I said, you are the only black leg in the family now. You know, the, the man, when the Holy Ghost is directing you to say something, the man was not offended at all. He raised up his hand and said, I surrender. I don't want to be a bad black leg. And you know, I led him to the Lord. He became born again. Mother born again. Father born again. And then the child, the lameness had gone away completely. And that same power is here tonight. Whatever the kind of yoke upon you, the Lord will destroy the yoke in Jesus' name. And uh, you know, I just say, uh, July I was in Ivory Coast. And in Ivory Coast, uh, if some things, uh, if I told you some things happening in the Ivory Coast, you may not be, you'll find it very difficult. But we have some of our uh, members who are here now in this conference who have come from Ivory Coast. And they will know this story I'm telling you if they were in church that day. Uh, that day we were having a meeting in the church. And I just came from Nigeria. And uh, the church, our church in Ivory Coast is by the side of the road. There was this man who was uh, going uh, on the street. He had never entered any church building before. He was a terribly occultic man. And he had a spiritual tiger following him all about. And any time he wanted to do havoc, it was a spiritual tiger. He was sent to those people and they are finished. And so he knew that he was singing in the church and he had the worship and he entered. 
He didn't know why he entered, but he just entered. And immediately after he entered, then I was preaching. And I preached, I preached, I preached. And it was revival time. Then I said, I'm going to pray. Then I said, close your eyes. That man later said he had never closed his eyes for anybody. Anywhere, anytime. But immediately I said, close your eyes. He didn't know what he did. He closed his eyes immediately. Because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And then I prayed. After the prayer, he opened his eyes. Normally, every time, he, you'll see the tiger right there by his side. He opened his eyes, he couldn't see the tiger. And then he ran out, searching for the tiger. Tiger, 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 where are you? And then the ushers ran after him. And then they grabbed him. They said, what's the matter with you? He said, I'm looking for my tiger. Ah, they said, you're coming to that man's meeting. You cannot see tiger again. And then he came back to the meeting. He surrendered all the charms and all the rings in his hand. He said, since tiger is gone, all this will not be useful anymore. And we led him to the Lord. And now he's worshipping with them over there. Tiger is gone, occultic power is gone, evil power gone. Everything is now completely all right. In fact, in Ivory Coast, I could tell you testimonies from Ivory Coast almost for a whole day. This last time I went, um, you know, I asked the pastor there, I said, can you remember the woman that had been blind for 60 years? She was blind at the age of 12. And now at the time I went there, she was 72. She had been blind for 60 years. And immediately we prayed like this, the eyes opened instantaneously. And then I asked the pastor, the last time I went in July, we were having a crusade over there in the field, and I said, how about that woman that uh, was healed some years ago? And the pastor pointed at the woman and said, the woman is there still walking about all right, eyes open, now we believe her, everything is all right. God is working mightily. Uh, you know, in Ivory Coast, I was there one day, and then they heard that I had come, and a man in the hospital that the intestines are rotting completely. And uh, the doctor said, there is nothing to do, no medication, nothing, because the man was going to die in about uh, two or three days. And they heard that I was in the Ivory Coast in church, so they told the doctor, they said, can we take this man to church? The doctor said, take him anywhere. He's going to die in any case. And so they brought him to church and were preaching and preaching and preaching. And after the preaching, I said, it's time to pray. And we began to pray. Do you know that God gave that man new intestine? And then immediately after the prayer for him to, he didn't even immediately give testimony when I said, God has taught you, you have been healed now. That man got up, he had been lying down. What do you think? A person that had rotting intestine. He couldn't walk, he couldn't do anything, he had been lying down there helpless. Immediately after the prayer, he got up, he went to the side of the road, he bought the food because he, had not, he was not even able to drink water all these days. He bought real solid native food. And then he ate, he bought a, a, a bottle of coke and drank it on top. And then he came back after eating and drinking to give testimony. That's the power of the Lord today. And uh, if you check up from the brethren that came from Ivory Coast, they will tell you that these are the things that actually have taken place. A lot is happening today because there is anointing. And that anointing breaks the yoke. I know that you are in a hurry to get the yoke broken. I said you are in a hurry to get the yoke broken. Rejoice because tonight every yoke will be broken in Jesus' name. Let me tell you point number two, which is the destruction of the yoke. The destruction of the yoke. I want you to tell me out loud, my yoke will be broken. My yoke will be broken. It will be broken permanently. How is the yoke to be broken? Number one, by the prayer of faith. Not the prayer of doubt. 
not the prayer of uncertainty, but the prayer of faith. And uh, tonight, as we pray, it is the prayer of faith. And that prayer of faith will destroy any yoke, any sickness, any infirmity, any problem in your life in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5 and verse 15. James 5 verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Will heal the sick. And I know it is so. And uh, you know, when you have faith with God, all things are possible. And therefore, you know, the number one thing that breaks the yoke is a prayer of faith. Number two, binding and loosing. Binding and loosing. That also breaks the yoke. Because we're told in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, that means certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Do you believe that? Here we are on earth. And whatever we bind here on earth tonight will be bound in heaven immediately. And when heaven binds something, that it is bound. And then it says, And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When you are released, you are released completely. And all those infirmities and all those evil things will not be upon you anymore in the name of the Lord. And uh, here we have, you know, you, the majority of you are students. And uh, students, sometimes the yoke is uh, affecting your academics. But I tell you that the Lord is in control. I said the Lord is in control. You might have heard me say this before in our church over here some years ago. And this uh, young fellow was in school. And it appears that he couldn't get anything, he couldn't catch anything. He was already in the secondary uh, school, but he just couldn't assimilate anything at all eventually they dismissed him and he just wrote to the parents and said don't waste your money or whatever you have on this child because the child cannot understand anything at all and so the uh, father uh, came to our Thursday meeting at revival time and he had uh, four children one of them was the child that had a terrible problem and then he just uh, came and said, Pastor, good evening. After the service, I said, good evening. And then he commanded his children, he said, shake the hands uh, of the pastor. And I didn't know what he meant. So the first uh, child uh, stretched out the hand. So I shook the first child. I shook the second. I shook the third. And then the fourth. And then the man said, thank you, pastor. I'll come back to give you testimony. He didn't even tell me what the problem was at that time. He only said the children should shake hands with me and, and that was all. And so I said, okay, bye-bye. I am waiting for your testimony. And then he went back to school. Then he went to the head the master there, the principal, and said, bring this child in back to school. Only one semester or one term. And uh, I'd let me spend the money for just these few months. They said, but it's of no use. This child will never make it. He cannot understand anything. He's so much behind his class. You cannot even do any remedial teaching because he's so far, far away behind. The man said, I understand what you are saying, but just put him there and let us see the result. He put the pressure on them that they accepted. He said, all right. And then at the end of that um, term, he went back there to collect the child. And then the teachers and the principal, everybody, they said, what happened to your child? What did you to the, do to the child? He said, tell me what happened before I tell you what I did. And then they said, the child just changed instantaneously. And that child became third in that class. The child that never, never made it before. It was after that he came back to tell me the testimony of what the Lord had done. I'm telling you that the Lord is working miracles. 
And the Lord is doing wonderful, wonderful things. And I believe that as you are here tonight, every yoke will be broken in your life in Jesus' name. Because it says whatsoever is bound here on earth will be bound in heaven. I know there are some of you adults here, you are non-student workers, and you have some needs in your life too, but you know, uh, with the adults, uh, great, great things are happening. And uh, sometimes some people say, how can we see you, or can we, uh, you know, have some time? Do we need all that time? Because already, uh, like I throw ball to you, I'm throwing the miracle at you tonight. And just stretch out your hand and catch it, and it is yours in Jesus' name. I was uh, traveling out uh, of the country to a particular program somewhere, and they were to change plane. You might have heard the story before. I want to hear it myself again. Uh, so we were to uh, catch another plane, so we got down, and I was having my hand luggage in my hand, and a woman was coming from my back and said, Excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir. Are you Pastor so and so? I said, Yes, by the grace of God. He said, I've been wanting to get appointment with you. I said, Why? Oh, he said, uh, She said, I've been married all these many years and, and there is no child. And uh, please, it's so difficult to see you in Lagos. Give me an appointment. Tell me the person I will see, the name of the secretary, so that when I come, I will say, He told me to come. I said, why do you have, why do you want appointment when the appointment is right here? Well, so she said, well, as we are walking on the tarmac in the airport, what we were on transit, going to join another plane, I said, yes, God is here, and we can pray right now. So I said, for how many years did you say you didn't have a church? She told me how many years. So I said, we didn't close our eyes. Because you were right there in the open with uh, the luggages in our hand. So as we were walking with the luggages, I said, in Jesus' name, O oh Lord, this woman needs a child. Give her the child. Then I said, Amen. So I said, bye-bye. I'll expect, uh, you know, your testimony. And she went to join our plane, and I went to join my own plane. And then one year later, uh, at Bagada here, uh, she came to see me. And uh, she said, do you remember me? I said, no, because I meet many people. He said, I'm the one that met you uh, outside, maybe Rome or somewhere. And we were at the tarmac, and I said, I needed an appointment. Yes, I said, I remembered. She said, this is a child that God had given in answer to that prayer. And you know, if God is doing all those things without preaching, without singing, without anything, and the miracle power of, of God is all at work, I believe that tonight is going to be a wonderful time. Because, number one, there is a prayer of faith. Number two, there is a binding and the loosing. Number three, there is the authority of the believer. You know the promise that the Lord has given us in Luke chapter 10? Look at it. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power. Isn't that good? I said, isn't that good? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. They shouldn't be walking over you. You should be treading over them. They shouldn't be fooling around in your, circum in your, in your environment. They should be treading over them. And then it says, over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to say this after me. Behold. Behold. Christ has given me power. To tread on serpents and scorpions. Christ has given me power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. You know you have the authority already. The word of God is in your mouth. And if you will just open your mouth and say, that thing cannot touch me, that thing cannot hurt me, that thing cannot destroy me, it will be so in Jesus' name. 
Not only that, uh, the yoke is broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 28, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. I cast out devils by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Not only that, by the presence of Christ. The presence of Christ. You see, because Christ is present in our lives, all the paths of darkness, all the evil things, they have to bow, they have to bend. And they will be destroyed in Jesus' name. And then there is the blood of the Lamb. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That thing cannot touch you. If you have the mark of the blood of Jesus upon you, and if you have that blood flowing fresh from Calvary, by faith you appropriate that, play, that uh, blood, and you plead that blood, because the devil fears that blood of Jesus Christ. It is a thing that destroys his power because underneath the mark of the blood of jesus we're completely free number seven the sword of the spirit that's the word of god the sword of the spirit immediately you say it is reaching the devil will have to flee away tonight the yoke will be broken by the anointing in our lives here together. And it doesn't matter what the problem has been, you are going to be free tonight. How many of you know you are going to be free tonight? I want you to put the Bible down now. The word of God is right in your heart, it's in your mouth, the word of faith which will preach, and you stand on your feet and have every yoke broken in your life, every sickness removed in your life, Every infirmity removed in your life because the yoke shall be broken by the anointing.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe the power of God is here tonight. And this is your chance and this is your opportunity. That any yoke and every yoke in your life will be broken tonight. You are not going to go without your answer. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be another time. It is tonight. And if you will just believe the Lord right now, every yoke is going to be broken. Amen. Let's bow the eyes close as we pray. And I want to remind you that you are receiving the answers to the prayers immediately. And so as the Lord leads and as I begin to pray, you just ought to believe along and you will see that the wonderful thing the Lord wants to do has taken place already. It's bowed and eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because I know you are here tonight. Lord Jesus, I know you are present with us. Spirit of the living God, I know you are also here. And I know that you are here in your Trinitarian power. And we know that the same power that created the universe out of nothing is here tonight. We know that the power that raised even the dead is here tonight. That same power in the life in the ministry of Jesus Christ that opened the eyes of the blind, that made the lame to walk, that healed every form of infirmity and every form of disease, I know that power is here tonight. And therefore, Lord, I pray that you will move without any interruption or hindrance in Jesus' name. I pray that in every hall, for every brother, every sister, every girl, every boy, you will move in a mighty way in Jesus' name. I pray that your people will never be the same again. I know that you have started the work already. And great is going to be the manifestation in the body, in the lives of your people. Lord, I pray that right now you move mightily. In Jesus' name I pray. Still keep your heads bowed and still keep your eyes closed. If you have anything swollen in your body, any part of your body, it's ania, it's goita, it's any other thing that is swollen in your body, I want you to raise up your hand, and then you will place your hand on that part that is swollen. And then after my prayer, you are going to check up yourself, and then you see what the Lord has done, and as you see that the manifestation is right there, then I want you, there's no space for you to come over here, but I want you, wherever you are, to just either say, don't say it now, either say praise the Lord or something, so that we'll know that something definite has happened there. Because you know tonight is your miracle night. So you have anything swollen in your body, whatever it is, just raise up your hand and your miracle is coming your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that you are here already, and we have already welcomed your power, the healing virtue here. Therefore, I pray for all these brothers and sisters raising up their hand. I pray that you touch them miraculously in Jesus' name. That swelling in their body by the mighty power of the Lord and the anointing upon me. I command you, be removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that that uh, uh, body that is swollen or that swelling will vanish away in Jesus' name. Touch them right now. Heal them right now. Deliver them now in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is done. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want the person that has his father in the hospital, you are there in the congregation. Can you raise up your hand? The one that your father is in the hospital right now, I'm waiting for you. Can you raise up your hand? Okay, God bless you. <laughs> father, in the name of Jesus. Whatever concerns uh, a child of God here concerns every one of us. I pray that your mighty power will go to that hospital right now. And that infirmity and that sickness on that father, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that the angels of God will hover around there. And the healing virtue of the Lord will pass through the body of that father. You heal that father in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heads by the nice clothes, a person that has tuberculosis, if you are there, you raise up your hand, I will be praying for you. You know that you have tuberculosis and you are really concerned about it. You want to get your healing immediately. Just raise up your hand where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know which you all things are possible. I take authority over the tuberculosis. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray that you touch every part of their body. Whatever is the root cause of that tuberculosis, I stand against it. Heal them by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. I want you to please close your eyes. The person that is still watching the bed at night, I'm waiting for you to raise up your hand. And I'll be praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, I know that what you all think are possible. I bring my dear ones before you. They are concerned about a problem like this. Therefore, I cancel that bedwetting in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, I pray that to touch them right now. Set them totally free, O oh Lord. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. If you have anyone that is suffering from cancer, you raise up your hand and I'll be praying for that person. If that person is here or if the person is not here, it doesn't really matter. Just raise up your hand on their behalf and uh, we're going to take authority over all those things and uh, they will be delivered and healed. Almighty God, we thank you. We know that with you all things are possible. We know that cancer cannot resist your mighty power. Therefore, Lord, I bring all those cancer patients before you. Touch them, heal them, deliver them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking that right now your healing virtue will pass through their body. I pray, O oh Lord, if it's any of these people that are raising up their hands themselves, you take the cancer away in Jesus' name. If it's a loved one at home, I pray that right now, we're at the point where they're sick, you are going to touch them. You go and deliver them. You heal them completely in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. The person in front of me, that's in the auditorium, number four, that has the epilepsy. If you raise up your hand, you are going to be prayed for and God is going to heal you. In the other halls, I'll be coming back to you, but I want the person that I am identifying in hall four, the hall in front of me, that has the problem of epilepsy. I'm waiting for you. If you raise up your hand, you catch the miracle immediately. Amen. God bless you. Now, 
keep up your hand, keep up that hand. In all the other halls, you have that same problem. I'm getting to you now. Any of the other halls, I have uh, somebody here in uh, hall one. I'm waiting for you to raise up your hand. That problem of epilepsy, where are you? I'm still looking for the hall one candidate. Okay, there you are. Just uh, keep up your hand. Any of the others, keep up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, you said this son shall follow them that believe. You said in your name I'll cast out devil. And epilepsy is not Holy Ghost, it's a civil spirit. That spirit of epilepsy I come against you. Come out in Jesus' name. That person particular in hall three that the epilepsy have been troubling, I command that epilepsy spirit come out in Jesus' name. And in that hall one, I command that epileptic spirit, come out in Jesus' name. In all the other halls, anyone resting up the hand there, I take authority in that right now. Over those uh, evil spirits, and I command, get out of the people in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, set every one of them free. Set every one of them free. Deliver them in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The person over here in hall 7 that has the venereal disease. And when you go to the toilet, you are a man, you are a young man. When you go to the toilet, you... Uh, ease yourself, face with terrible problem and pain and I'm waiting for you. You are over here to my left and you are in hall 7. Okay, that's the person there. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know which you all things are possible. I'm asking right now that that venereal disease, you clear it away in Jesus' name. I pray that every yoke will be destroyed. All the power of darkness will be destroyed. Set him free and heal him in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please, please, set bow, set bow, and eyes closed. I want to tell you this before I point out the person that the Lord wants me to identify now and pray for. I was in Zaire some time ago. I was Zaire is a French-speaking country in Central Africa. And they were having the crusade uh, that night. And uh, here was uh, this woman. She had AIDS. A-I-D-S. HIV positive. And she was uh, already drying up like a stick. And they brought her on a stretcher. Uh, she could not rise up before the prayer. She was about dying. Uh, the, the AIDS had gone into an advanced stage. And uh, while I was preaching, they uh, laid her there in front of me. And in between me and the congregation. And immediately after the prayer that night, the mighty power of God struck her. She got up out of the place, uh, you know, they put her. And uh, the national television of Zaire, uh, they took uh, uh, shots of her. And it showed her over the television to the whole nation the whole day. She was completely healed of AIDS. Amen. Uh, there was somebody in the, in the embassy in um, Namibia, uh, she had uh, AIDS also, and uh, she was working with uh, the Zambian embassy in Namibia. And she phoned and wrote uh, to me in Nigeria saying, uh, I'm dying because of AIDS, and I will get all the money I have and buy my ticket and come to Nigeria so you will pray for me. I said, don't uh, come to Nigeria. I'll be going to Zambia for a program. I gave her the date of the program. I said, meet me over there. And I believe everything will be all right. And she did that and met me in Zambia. 
when I got there and uh, we had a two minutes prayer and then she went for test after the prayer she wrote a wonderfully nice letter to me after that she had been totally healed uh, the Lord is working today and the power of the Lord will never fail now heads bowed and eyes closed there's somebody over there you have taken the test already and they told you that you have HIV and tonight I can just cancel that thing but I'm waiting for you to raise up your hand already it's confirmed you know it heads bowed and eyes closed the hand up can you wave the hand at me and Raise it up very well. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want you to keep that hand up. Listen to me as I talk to you before I pray. When I stand here, all I do, I'm led directly. I don't premeditate anything. Uh, all these things that God is doing now, I didn't know about them before I started preaching. And when God point points something, it's for a particular purpose. And I'm telling you that when you are prayed for like this tonight, even death cannot do anything with you anymore. Yeah. And all those germs and everything, you'll just find that everything is gone and we have prayed for medical doctors having a kidney failure that uh, they didn't know that anything will you know happen and they have been healed i prayed for people that the doctors said they were going to die and the relatives had bought coffin uh, to bury them after i prayed the lord got that person out of the hospital they took the coffin back to the carpenter and so as you are there tonight raising up your hand I rejoice with you. It is gone in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because I know you are mightily present here tonight. And I pray for these people raising up their hands in this hall and in that hall. Oh Lord, I'm asking right now that your mighty power will touch them. The explosive power of the Holy Ghost will come upon their body. And that AIDS virus and HIV will get away in Jesus' name. I pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse them. Will purge them will destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray they will not die. They will live to declare the glory of the Lord. Let the spirit of life replace the spirit of death in Jesus' name. Heal them completely. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As by the nice close to is that person that uh, before your last examination, you had a brain problem and uh, they had to refer you to uh, the doctors because of the brain problem. Where are you? I'm waiting for you. Okay, God bless you. You are there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking right now that that uh, brain problem will never come back in Jesus' name. I pray that the cooling effect of the blood of Jesus, like rain, like dew, showers coming from heaven, will touch that brain right, right now. Will touch your mind right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The individuals that know that you are under a curse in a family. And uh, you have looked at your family. You have seen it affecting your seniors, affecting your juniors and affecting you. And uh, you have been saying, when will this curse be removed? It is tonight. The yoke is going to be broken. 
you will be singled out from your family. And all the effects of curse will not be upon your life again. The power is tangibly present here tonight. Just by raising up your hand, you are set free. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And any other kind of curse. And every yoke of any curse is broken and removed in Jesus' name. All these, your dear children, no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. Every man that rises up against them in judgment, they will condemn. When it passes through the fires, it will not burn them. Through the waters, it will not drown them. You will never leave them, you will never forsake them. I pray, O oh Lord, that every hindrance before them will crumble in Jesus' name. From now on, there will be progress. From now on, there will be success. From now on, everything that ought to happen in their lives, according to your promise, according to your word, will be done in Jesus' name. That oppression at night, I cancel it. That mark they are making on your body when you wake up in the morning, I cancel it. The place they are taking your name to, I cancel it. That mommy water speed that is troubling you, visiting you at night, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, set them free. Oh Lord, set them free. Set every one of them free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now I'm praying for those who are married. Uh, you may married either that as you are married, there is fire burning in the home. And the marriage is about to hit the rock. Or it is that there is uh, not enough to be able to maintain you in that family. Or it is that there is no child. I know what I'm talking about is because of time. I'm bringing everything together. I know you are there. Those things are spoken about. Do you know that right now your miracle is coming your way? Just lay your hand upon yourself and raise up the other hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because I know that you are mighty God. You have never changed. You will never change. Therefore, I bring all these, my beloved brothers and sisters, before you. I'm asking, O oh Lord, peace will come into their families in Jesus' name. That fire that is born in a family, I pray that you put out that fire in Jesus' name. That other person over there, there is a, another fellow, another woman outside the family that has done something that that uh, family will not uh, be able to uh, get things right because of the jealousy and the envy. And uh, I can't begin to tell the details of what they have done and uh, what they have done in secret so that uh, there will be no peace in that family so that you will not have the joy in that family. Every evil thing that is done against this family, I break it in Jesus name I pray for these who are looking for children touch the man touch the woman and I pray oh Lord that every infirmity that is hindering them from having children remove it in Jesus name give them the desires of their hearts that family over there that uh, when you sleep at night there's another personality that comes in between you and then you are not able to uh, actually go together do things together the way it ought to be done between husband and wife i review that evil personality you know the sound of my voice you recognize my authority i command you leave that family in jesus name and uh, that terrible fibroid over there by the mighty power of God, I can see you right now. Be removed in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for that man that is not having the body complete. And because of the partial uh, impotence, I command right now that your body will be complete. A creative miracle will be done in your body in Jesus' name. 
human over there will be blocked you. So I pray that the mighty power of God will open everything now. And you'll have the power to conceive for your husband in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that every miracle, that every family is claiming here tonight, give unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I know our time is gone, but please pardon me. There are some urgent cases I need to handle. Uh, the, close your eyes, please. Uh, the lady over there, every time you have your monthly period, it's almost like hell on earth. And it's, it's so terrible, you thought of what am I going to do so that these things will not continue like that. If you just raise up your hand right now, that same God that created you is going to recreate you. And all those things that have been troubling you all this time, everything is going to come to an end. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bring my dear sisters before you. I pray, Lord, that this excruciating pain, unnecessary pain, as if they are almost having labor pains to deliver children, I pray, O oh Lord, you remove it in Jesus' name. Whatever hormones or whatever composition in the body, whatever it is that needs to be readjusted, adjust everything in Jesus' name. I pray that you set them free. From the suffering, from the sickness, and from every pain, set them free in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. My dear sister over there that is hearing the disturbing noise in your ear, and they want to run you mental, and every time you'll be looking back, wanting to find out, who is uh, uttering that uh, loud voice you are hearing in your ear? And then you look and there is nobody, it's just the devil. I'm looking for you. If you raise up your hand, I'm going to drive that uh, terrible noise away. That, that, there you are. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that terrible noise in the ear. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Now, whatever other sickness you have in your body, just lay your hand upon yourself. You will never be the same again. I said you will never be the same again. Whatever it is, whatever it is, the miracle is there right now. You will catch it. It is yours. Father, in the name of Jesus, that person over there that has that evil power and that evil personality, and you think you can torment anybody here? You think you can touch anyone here? Anywhere I stand, authority is there. I neutralize that power in Jesus' name. That evil power, that power of darkness, that you want to try to manifest and pinch and hurt anyone, I break that thing, I destroy that thing, I remove that authority from you in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord will forgive you. I pray the Lord will set you free. Thank you, Father, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Now concerning all your children, dear Lord, I bring all these people before you. As they lay their hands upon themselves, I command that every sickness in their body, you remove in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray, the pain in their body now, the suffering in their body now, by your mighty power, it is removed in Jesus' name. I pray that from the soles, the top of their head, to the soles of their feet, you will talk. You will heal them. You will deliver them. Set them free in Jesus' name. The person that is having the sword that refused to be healed, be healed in Jesus' name. The one that is having that chest pain, be healed in Jesus' name. 
the one that is having that as if they're using pain to pinch you every time and different parts of the body be healed in jesus name the failing eyesight over there i command that the invisible bandage the devil is putting on your eyes will be removed right now see very clearly in jesus name that uh, person there that has one leg shorter than the other i command that the mighty power of god will touch that short leg you short leg i command you go out in jesus name that pain in the waist and in the spinal cord over there i command right now be healed in jesus name that disease of paralysis i pray that the mighty power of god will come into your spine will come into your joints will come into your bones you will arise and walk in jesus name oh lord i pray that for that person that has been initiated into a cult and you know it i pray oh lord that that initiation ceremony will be destroyed right now in jesus name i pray that every form of sickness in anyone on anyone here you remove it in jesus name the lady over there that is having your hair the hair on your head falling and falling and falling even though you're a young person i command that thing will stop and everything will become normal in jesus name you must please pardon me for this that lady over there that your breast has not developed and it really concerned you because it doesn't make you to really naturally look like a lady i command that right now normal development will come to you normal development will come to you and whatever is retained the growth of that essential part of your body i remove that retardation in jesus name that person that is everywhere you go it's like you are wearing it's like you are putting on a heavy load your neck is feeling the load even though there's no load on your head that invisible load i remove it right now in jesus name the person that is always having a stomach ache right there i command right now that thing will vanish away in jesus name Oh Lord, I pray for these students that are always visiting in the hospital, especially when the examination is coming. I cancel that thing. I cancel that thing. Break that yoke in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that showers of blessing, showers of blessing, showers of blessing will come upon everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.